All right, lesson four two. Addition and multiplication. So if you've only got about five seconds, here is the rule. Probability of A or B, add them up. If it's the probability of A and B, multiply. Now, a little bit uh, more of the details. Most of these events are going to be compound uh, probabilities, and so they get a little bit dicey. Um, what is the word compound amount? Let's start there. Com compound, excuse me, it means more than one. A good way to think about this is here we have a universe. This is a Venn diagram. So our universes are always rectangles. And you've got event A and event B. And you've got to look at this and see four different regions. There's the region inside the universe, um, but not in either A or B. Okay, and that would be we would kind of think about that is this space outside. Then there's the space that is just A, and that'd be there. And then just B, and then the overlap. So as you do these problems, think about these four regions. Uh, it may even help to draw out Venn diagram. Um, and then uh, know that this is my uh, way of writing it, that you won't find that in the textbook at all. Um, but when I say that something is outside of A or B, that's one way of writing that. You can write the not symbol as that little squiggle sign. So here we go. Addition rule, first one, A or B. Well, we're going to add the two probabilities up. Keep in mind, we're only doing one trial, and either A or B has occurred. Now, one thing we've got to make sure is that A and B can't happen at the same time. So we don't want to double count things. Let me choose a different color here so I'm not writing in green. All right, so imagine you roll a die. What is, ex what is the probability that you get a prime number or an even number? We're assuming it's the normal one through six. So prime would be two, three, and five, and even two, four, six. So if I add those up, 3 plus 3, you would think would be 6 out of 6, which is 100%. But clearly we can see that 1 has not shown up. And that's because we have double counted the 2. So there's only 2 here and 3 here, so that would be 5 out of 6. Capiche? All right. So don't double count with the addition rule. Um, the fancy word for overlap there not being one, is disjoint. So if two sets, like the odd numbers and the even numbers on the um, die, the, there is no overlap between them, okay? They're mutually exclusive, and we like that, okay? Disjoints, probabilities. Multiplication rule. What is the probability of A and B occurring? Now, in this case, when we say that, the implication is that we have two different trials, the first trial and the second trial. Because obviously, if you have one trial, you can't have two things occurring. The probability of, um, at least with simple probabilities, right? The probability of B, um, given that A has occurred. So this is another way of expressing that up there. And the way you read that is the probability that B occurs, given that, that's what that bar means, A has occurred. Again, you've you got two trials. Trial A, you're looking for A. Trial B, you're looking for, or trial 2, you're looking for B. Now, the big question we have to ask is, are they dependent? Does A and B depend on each other? Like, does B realize A went? Well, here's an example. Drug screening, this was a previous problem that we looked at, a uh, chart on the previous lesson. And uh, here we got 50 adults, 45 tested positive, 5 tested negative. So total of 50. So looking at without, with replacement, yeah, what is the probability the first person was positive, the second person was negative. So 45 out of 50, 5 out of 50. So the probability of A and B would be, as you would expect, 45 out of 50, 
times. Again, uh, you can do some fancy canceling here, 1, 10. You could just grab your calculator, though, and divide that by 5, you get 9, 10, so you get 9 hundredths, or 0 0.09. Now we're going to do this problem again. This time, though, it says without replacement. So again, the first trial goes normal. 45 out of 50 are positive. Now the second trial, there's one person missing. So now this trial is only out of 49 people. Now there are still five people in there who would test negative. So now, again, same thing, probability of A and B is 45 over 50 times 5 over 49 Doing some canceling here, we get 10, 1, uh, I don't think 45, 49 is probably not prime, but it's only divisible by 7. Well, I suppose we could divide these by 5, couldn't we? So that would be 9, and that would be 2. So it looks like we have 9 over 2 times 49 is 98. So you can see that these probabilities are close to each other, but not exactly the same. So it's important to kind of distinguish between those. Um, here's a case where if you are dealing with a large number of individuals, right? We have 247 million adults. And you're trying to find what is the probability that three adults use drugs. Uh, this is under the assumption that 10% of adults use drugs. Um, I don't know, like... Uh, a lot of missing details here. What does that mean? Like, is caffeine a drug, right? Um, if so, I'm one of those 10%. Um, I think they're referring to illicit drugs. I'm not entirely sure, question mark. But again, it, it seems kind of high for me, but um, maybe I am naive. Anyways, so here it is without replacement, right? So we would have, for example, 24,743,683 out of right? 247 million. And then the second group, uh, there would be one person left, so it would be 682, and then it would be 829. And 681 times 828. Multiplying these three out, you would get something like 0 0.000999989989 0 0 blah 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 blah. All right. Now imagine if we were doing not just three adults here, right? But imagine we were doing this with like a hundred adults or a thousand adults. Well, this would be really hard to do. And because our results, because these values are so large, right? We have a five percent guideline rule for cumbersome dependent events, okay? So if n is greater than 0 0.05, yeah, of the population. In this case, we had uh, three. Sorry, if n is less than 5% of the population, and we were well under that. We treat that as independent. So we don't have to worry about those weird fractions. So all we do then is we say, okay, the probability the first person is using drugs is 10%, second person 10%, third person 10%, and we get a value of, I believe, 0 0.001, which you can see is really close to that one there. If we were to round this up, right, we would get 0 0.001. All right. Reading problems carefully is kind of critical. In this case, um, looking at birthdays and finding the probability that two people are born on the same day of the week. So if we look at your birthday on your particular year, what is the probability that we know somebody else in the room, right, uh, from your class who might be born on the same day of the week? So to do this, we would take the probability of A times the probability of B, and that would be the two different students. So the probability of A, oddly enough, is just going to be 1 because we don't care what day the first person is. The probability of the second person, again, to match that would be 1 seventh. 
So this probability is 1 7th. Now the probability that two people are both born on Monday, right? That's a slightly different question than the first one. Same day of the week, right? So the probability the first person is 1 7th, the second one 1 7th. So the probability together is 1 49th. Much tougher proposition. You'd need to have like 49 people in the room before you would find two people that have the same. And again, that would even be 100% chance. But we just have to be careful with our language there, that when we ask things that we know how to interpret those that word. Airplanes, we don't like them to crash. That's example seven here. And one of the things they do is they have this idea of redundancy. It's kind of like a backup. So for the, the flappers on the wings that kind of make the plane go up and down and left and right, the steering um, and the wheels come down, they use hydraulics. And Airbus has three of them, and they're independent of each other. They're on their own system. And the probability that any one of them has a failure is less than two thousandths. Yeah? So if... First question, what is the probability that one airplane with one system, one hydraulic system on board would fail, would work for a flight, was, would work for a flight? And so then I say, okay, well, the probability that it would work would be 1 minus 0 0.002, which would be 0 0.998, right? Pretty good success rate. But uh, if we had a crash, if Airbus crashed every two out of a thousand flights, um, they would be grounded so fast. So uh, when we put in three of them, right? Now find the same thing. What is the probability that a hydraulic system works with three redundant systems? Well, we know that the success rate is 99.8%. Um, Now, this is one way of approaching the problem. Unfortunately, this is incorrect. Um, what we have to look at is not that each one succeeds, but rather what is the probability that they all three fail. So here again, reading the, the, the words really carefully, um, we need to take 2% the failure rate, right? Because we need all three of them to fail for the flight not to work. All right. And now when we do this, we get an incredibly low number. I should have written it down. Um, ugh, lots of nines in it. So um, 1 minus 0 .0000000. 000 000. We'll pretend there's that many eight zeros in it. Okay. Um, so the success rate is much higher. Uh, for with three systems, okay? Finally, what is the rationale for multiplication? Let's say I gave you a test right now. True or false? A pound of feathers is heavier than a pound of gold. I don't know, right? Which way could that go? True or false? Well, I will tell you the answer is either true or false. So you got to pick one. Question next two. Who said by a small sample we may judge the whole of the whole piece? Was it Judge Judy, Judge Dredd, Miguel de Cervantes, George Gallup, or Gandhi? All right, got your answers down? True or false? A, B, C, or D, or E? All right, well, you could have made a list of all of the possibilities, okay? Um, my guess is you probably had to guess on at least one of them, unless you Googled them. So you have true or false. This is possibly the easiest way to think about the problem anyways. We have true or false. And then you have, with each of those, you got paired the five letters. So there are 10 options. But only one is the right one. So again, if we look at this in terms of the probability of you getting an A on this exam, right? 100%. You got both questions right probability in the first one, one half probability of the second one, one fifth, therefore it's one tenth, right? 
So again, one out of 10, right? All makes sense. Whether you do the tree or the list, the multiplication should make perfect sense. And here's our revealing our answers. Um, unfortunately, it's true. A uh, pound of feathers is heavier. Um, because of how we measure, measure feathers and measure gold, uh, you can look in the book, it explains the Troy and Avera Poire, or some French term for feathers. And part C was Cervantes, the man who wrote Don Quixote. Is, um, he probably said it in Spanish, though, and with a good accent, much better accent than mine. Anyways, so there we go. Uh, best of luck.